Hello and welcome to today's video. In this one, we'll be covering a very common question I hear a lot, is it worth using or upgrading gems? So within this video, we'll be covering a lot of common questions, mistakes, and some tips that will improve your squad for the future. Now we do have a lot to cover, but I don't want to make this a super long video. So if you have any questions by the end of this, then please make sure to leave any comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. Also, if you're an experienced player, please try and help out the new players in the comments as well. Now what we're going to do is start off talking about fake power, as I'm sure a lot of you might be thinking this is what gems can sometimes feel like. But just to quickly explain what fake power is for people who don't know, I have this great example of a rune on an item that it actually shouldn't be on. Now even though this rune shouldn't be on this type of fighter, you can still equip it, and this will increase your fighter's power and in the same turn your squad power but this won't be helping you out in any way as the rune doesn't work, which will mean you'll be facing tougher opponents even if your team isn't any more powerful. So that's what fake power is, it's literally how it sounds, and there is actually some truth when it comes to gems, but we'll come back to this at the end when I go over the tips. For now, let's talk about what gems you should equip to begin with. Let's say you're starting out of your gem base, or maybe you're just about to unlock the area, what sort of gems should you be looking to aim for? Now this will differ between different people, but this will be my personal opinion. I think if you're at the beginning stage, you should be looking to go for blue gems, and the reason for this is because any gem will give you a bonus in stats, but equipping the right ones will make an impact for you in a good way. Now I wouldn't say to ever equip commons or greens, because eventually you will need to swap them out, and taking gems of your items will cost you diamonds, so it's not worth wasting your time with low quality gems. But let's say you're at throne room 10 or 11, and even if you have rushed your squad, you should only be looking to equip purples, legendaries or ancients. And this is because your items are unlikely to change over a long period of time. So you could save yourself some time and diamonds by only equipping high quality gems. So for that reason, I would aim to do your gem base at least twice a day, but ideally three times a day and unlock those purple gems until your squad is where you want them to be. Once you have your gems at whatever level you are, should you be looking to upgrade and merge your gems? Well, this part is a little tricky, but it still has a simple answer. Ideally, you want to have every gem at level 1 until you can get them to Ancients. Myself and others have found that the experience gained by having maxed out level gems seems to make battles a bit harder, and can cause you to slowly gain fake power the more you increase them in level. But for whatever reason, once they're level 1, it seems to balance out the system again. You can argue that once you actually merge two gems together, technically that one gem doesn't equal two maxed out gems, but it just seems like once you add a new gem, it just seems to balance out, so that's why I'm explaining it. Now, you might also be thinking, how can I level up my gems to merge if they should all stay at level 1? So there are three things you should or could be doing to level them up. Firstly, only level up two gems at a time that you're looking to merge in the future. This way you can minimise the amount of maxed out gems you have equipped at one time. The other way is to only level up gems that you have in your inventory to ignore any negative impacts that levelling up can bring. The final thing you can do is wait until the treasure event comes along, and for anyone new to this event, it will have hammers involved with breaking tiles or chests. These events are great for earning high amounts of gold, so this could be the best time in upgrading your gems if you want to leave them on your fighters. Please leave a like if you're enjoying this video so far, and especially if you think you've learned something already. Now, you may have seen adverts for ancient gems for £99 or multiple legendary gems for £45, but all of these offers should be avoided. Yes, if your friend pays for them, they will be ahead of you, but if you do your gem base enough and work towards merging, you can start to earn these high quality gems yourself for free. If you take my account for example, I currently have 10 ancient gems at the moment and I have not paid for a single one of them. Now for you to get to this stage, it will take you a really long time, but you can have your first ancient gem quicker than you think if you just go and focus for it. There is another way of earning legendary gems for free, and that's through the clan territories. I remember a long time ago, and some of you might remember as well, legendary gems used to only cost 90,000 clan coins, but that obviously caused some issues when they only had 5 or 10 in stock, depending on your store level, so the way they fixed it is to make it available to everyone at a much higher price, and limiting the amount you can have to technically too. Now, I don't want you to get in trouble with your clan for not upgrading buildings if you're meant to, but if you know your clan has been slowing down with other buildings, maybe consider going for this instead. You could also go for these gold chests for a much lower price to really speed up the process of upgrading your gems as another option. 
So that's the main concept of gems and if you should consider trying to merge them in the future. And just before we move on to the tips, make sure you do get subscribed if you enjoyed this sort of content, as I want to be making more videos in the future and the more people that join along, the more likely this will be made possible. Let's finally move on to the tips I have now and some of them will be recapped from what I've said already, but I'll repeat some of them just in case if they got missed. Firstly, only use gems that you think will stay on your squad for quite some time. This will save you diamonds in the future and just make your lives easier. Next, try your best to have level 1 gems where possible as this will reduce the likelihood of adding fake power. Another tip would be to not use crit gems on mages as I find this will help you find much easier opponents and the crit from basic mage attacks don't really add up to much. In a similar way to what I've just mentioned, if you only want to use certain gems on fighters to really low your overall squad power but still have a really decent squad, then here is the following things to add to these fighters. For pure tanks, they should only have health, armor and magic armor gems on, assassins and archers should have damage, crit and dodge, and mages should only have spell power and health. By removing all the other gems, you will find this will help you with your gem base and arenas, but do remember, most other stats can help with clan wars and clan bosses, so there will always be some sort of trade-off. Next tip would be to wait for treasure events to upgrade your gems on fighters, or during any time in the game, upgrade your gems through the inventory to not increase fake power at the same time. And lastly, which I hope is obvious, don't pay for offers that come at such a high cost. If you're really desperate to gain legendary or ancient gems, then maybe consider buying the Gem Bay Pirate Pass for $4.59, or even if it's different for you, it will certainly be a much lower price than what they're trying to offer you. This way, with enough time, you can earn yourself three legendary gems for each season and whatever purples that come along at the same time. So with everything done, I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember to get subscribed if you want to see more content like this in the future. And why not check out this video here, where I show you what offers are actually could be worth the price and which ones are going to be total ripoff. 